Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we have a super exciting video for you guys. So today we're going to have my perspective and a bunch of the pros perspective on the new update. So we're going to be speaking about everything to do with the new brawler skins, balance changes, just everything they have brought into the game. We're going to be talking about it. We're going to have some brawl ball in the background while we do so. I don't know how much we're going to try since we're mostly going to be try speaking to you and put 90% of our attention into you guys. So it's just going to be some background gameplay. So let's get into some games here and let's start talking about exactly what came out and what we think of it. Okay, so let's start talking about the new brawler, EMZ. So this is actually a really interesting brawler. Um, it's really, really cool, actually, but I, I don't know if I like it. Out of 10, I'd probably rate the update probably an 8.6 or something like that. I thought it was a really, really good update, and honestly, it could have been a 9 if the new brawler didn't come out. And let me tell you exactly why I don't like this new brawler. I do love it when any brawler comes into the game because obviously it's super cool just to have more brawlers in the game. The more, the better. It's it's technically a MOBA, so you know the more options, obviously the better it's going to be. Unfortunately, this is basically just a copy of Sandy. Now, I did a little bit of research. I watched some gameplay, and unfortunately, you know, I'm not a big YouTuber, so I don't get to play the brawler before you guys. I can just see what you guys can see, but based on what I can see, it's actually not as broken as people think. I think it's just going to shred through every just mid-tier, like mid-range brawler. So when we're speaking Spike, Tara, Nita, um, just anything like that, it's going to do really, really well against. But then when we start talking about brawlers like tanks and range, I think it's just going to get absolutely just like pooped on. I don't think it's going to be that good. It's a lot squishier than you think. It's not as good as everyone thinks it is. So I think let's just wait a couple days for it to come out. Wait a few days so we can see, um, so we can get used to it, learn how to counter it, stuff like that. And then we can see exactly what we decide. We can decide if we like it or not. But that's just my personal opinion. Anyways, we're going to talk about the star powers as well. The first star power, I mean, it's... When I, when I say it's a clone to Sandy, I, it's not just how she looks or how her shots are or anything like that. It's just absolutely everything. So she basically has the same star power as Sandy. Anybody in her little radius circle when she has her super gets affected 200 damage per second. And that's what was released. Okay, so here we go into our next game. Now we're going to be speaking about the skins. And I think this is the coolest set of skins that have come out in just a super, super long time. So my favorite skin, I'm going to buy this 100%. I'm super excited about this, is the just the Jesse. Oh my god, the Dragonite Jesse is just so, so clean. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's It just fits Jesse so, so much. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited for that Jesse skin to come out. You guys have no idea. That's such a nice Jesse skin. To be honest, I'm not a huge Jesse fan. I don't love Jesse. I don't play Jesse a ton, but that it's just such a beautiful skin. And it goes really well with her other skins that she has, like the, her White Knight Jesse or her Dragonite Jesse. I don't know what it's called. But that's also a really cool skin. So, so to see a Black Knight uh, Jesse is just really, really cool. And it's cool that they're making skins according to kind of like the Brawler's theme. You know, they're not just making things really randomly, which is awesome. Um, I guess we're just gonna score, but we're gonna just keep talking into matchmaking. Oh, I guess not. So we can keep talking. Um, but anyways, that's definitely my favorite skin. Uh, moving on, we have Witch Shelly, and that's a really, really clean skin. Now, there's a lot of Shelly skins, and I think there are a lot of good ones. I don't know exactly which one is my favorite as of now, but I mean, that Shelly skin is just absolutely amazing. Uh, you guys can see it on the screen right now. It's, it's just, it's so clean, it's so good looking, it's amazing. And, you know, there's not much more to say to that. Let's look at the Shelly skins right now, actually. There are one, two, three. We already have three, and I mean, these are three really nice Shelly skins. Sorry for that noise. Happens sometimes. I can't control it. Bandito Shelly is great. Original Shelly honestly does have a really nice taste. And I mean, Star Star Shelly, I know some of you just can't get Star Shelly, but it's such a great skin. I'm very happy I have it. And, you know, I think this Witch Shelly actually might overtake it since the Halloween theme is super, super cool. Now, moving on, we have Werewolf Leon, and wow, is that a nice, clean skin. That's an amazing skin. I absolutely love Werewolf Leon. It's it's just so clean. It's, it's beautiful, basically. And they just came out with a Leon skin, too, which is kind of interesting to see they come out with skins back-to-back -back for a brawler. Two Leon skins within the month is kind of a little bit weird, if you ask me. I, if me, myself personally, I would say focus on maybe making a Pam skin, um, some skins for brawlers who, do, who just don't have it or have one. And, you know, I understand Leon has one, but that one just came out and it's really hyped. So a lot of people like it. So I don't know if this new skin was necessary, but Werewolf Leon is also, you know, just another amazing skin. I love the theme. The more the merrier. I'm super happy in least or last, but finally not least. This one's a little bit weird. But we have Poco Piper. Now, don't ask me what happened behind the scenes at Supercell. I don't know what was happening over there. I don't know if, like, 
Piper's dressing or Poco is dressing up as Piper or what their thoughts were behind this. But this is just a super interesting skin. We've never seen anything like this within Brawl Stars. It's literally just one brawler put into another brawler. So that's super, super interesting. I've never seen something like that. I don't know if you guys have in another game, but that I just found that super, super interesting. It was really weird when I first saw it. I don't know if I've warmed up to it. Um, it's definitely not like a favorite skin of mine, like when I'm talking about coolest skins, but it's definitely a funny one. I'm obviously gonna get, it, gonna get all four because I play this game way too much to not have every skin in the game outside of the 50k skins, obviously. But yeah, that was just really, really cool. So I guess that there's that. But something that I was really interested in is there was actually a gene, well, kind of like a gene looking thing in the swamp um, in the in the video for Brawl Talk and we didn't see that everyone was speculating that was going to be a new brawler or a jean skin and we just have no clue what happened to that. I don't know if they scratched it. I don't know if they weren't happy with what they had but that definitely looked like they planned it because the other brawler EMZ was also in the video and I mean I just have no clue where that uh, where that brawler went or that skin or whatever it was So I'm super interested to see if we're gonna get that brawler in a later update Maybe they just wanted to push it back a little. I have no clue, but I guess we'll see But yeah, that's it for skins. So let's finish off this game perfect time and we finish it Let's hop into the next game and we're gonna speak about the new mode Which is what I am super 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 excited about let's hop into it Okay, so here we go into the next game and this is what I'm super 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 excited for um, so if we look at this tweet over here by Danny, now I don't have it in front of me, I last saw it like 16 hours ago, but I thought it would be cool to bring it up. He says that trophies are not obviously, I mean trophies are cool, they're awesome, but trophies are not a way to determine skill at all. Let's just break those walls over there, watch the Brawl Ball guide to know how to score that goal. But anyways, um, they're not a way to accumulate skill, trophies are time, that's what it is. Um, when you see rank 35s done by pro players, I do them a bunch, I have I believe 2 or 3, I don't really know how many rank 35s I have. When I do it, it's for content, it's to have fun with people, it's to join and be part of a grind. It has nothing to do with me trying to say, you know, I'm so good, I can get a rank 35 or something like that. Any pro in Brawl Stars can get multiple rank 35s a season. It's It has no skill whatsoever. It's just, it's just you know, you kind of like showing off or you wanting to have the badge of rank 35 or something like that. Very OP that we got an insta queue over there, actually. Usually it takes forever. Um, but anyways, yeah. So anyways, to get into this new mode... I don't know why I went into that little rant over there. Danny says over here that trophies aren't skill. It's just a, it's just a matter of time, basically. And that was a really big thing when he said that. And he said that right after this update came out because of this new mode. Well, I don't know if it's a new mode, but a new leaderboard. We don't know much about it. I'm really interested to learn more. And I guess we're going to learn more within the following weeks or a week or a couple days or whenever they decide to release this update. But anyways, it's a skill-based matchmaking leaderboard. And what it basically is, is you get points for winning. So there's showdown, duo showdown, takedown, lone star, all the 3v3 modes, and you get three games a day. And in those three games, you have to try and maximize how good you do. So win all your 3v3 games, come first in your takedown or your lone star. Whatever it is, you gotta try hard as much as you can to get those top positions. And then once you do get those top positions, oh, well, that was a clean super. Once you do get those top positions, all you have to do is you know just stay there it's just you get skill based matchmaking so you start to face harder people and harder teams and just more challengingness and it's just it's just really cool that we can actually get some competition on ladder i guess we're going to see exactly what it is because we have no clue yet but it's really really exciting for sure i'm excited to learn all about it and to figure out what it is as a pro i mean i, I don't even need to put those i'm just going to call myself a pro it's just it's amazingly exciting for me to be able to hear that they're they're looking more into competitiveness and into the pro scene and they want to you know make things a little bit more competitive a little bit less time based and they've been looking a lot towards end game content and things that top players can do and i'm just super happy that they're looking at that now it's really amazing and i'm happy it's finally starting uh but yeah that's gonna be that mode that was super super exciting to hear and what the only thing we have left is balance changes now unfortunately Hope we had to finish this game first because I don't know the exact balance changes off by heart because again we just saw it today. I, I could tell you that I was really happy about some but really disappointed about some other ones. Um, so anyways let's finish this game off. Let's get some full clips going and hopefully let's just get into the next game as fast as possible and let's talk about the balance changes. 
Okay, so we're just going to start off in matchmaking since I don't know how long talking about these balance changes are going to take. So I'm going to be looking at my screen also because again, I can't have them memorized. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, I haven't sat here recording memorizing for 12 hours. So we're going to start off with 8-bit. So 8-bit has a decreased main attack damage from 340 to 320. This is minus 5.9%. Now 8-bit is definitely one of the strongest brawlers in the meta. Um, she's, or he, sorry, or I guess it doesn't really have it. Whatever. <laughs> um, it's, it's strong. None, nonetheless, I mean, it's it's a great brawler. I definitely put it in my top five, maybe maybe six or seven at most. But I mean, it's a good brawler, so it's a good nerf. I'm really happy they did that. Um, BB has a decreased health from 4,300 to 4,200. That's 2.3%. And let me just try and full clip this guy. Okay, I got that kill. Then her decreased spitball damage went from 1,000 to 900, which is 10%. So that's really, really huge. Um, really, really important. So those are two really good brawlers that are getting a huge nerf. Well, I guess the BB one isn't, or sorry, the 8-bit one isn't ginormous, but the BB one's definitely huge, and I'm really happy with those two. And then we got Sandy. So Sandy's decreased health from 4,000 to 3.8. That's 5%. We have decreased healing from the healing star power from 300 to 250, which is minus 16.7%, and decreased sandstorm duration from 12 seconds to 9 seconds, which is 25%. So those are really big numbers when we're talking about balance changes. You don't usually see those numbers. You usually see singular numbers such as like 5, 4, 7, anything like that when it comes to the balance changes. So those are really, really big nerfs. Moving on to Piper, her decreased attack damage at max range went from 1640 to 1600, so minus uh, 2.4%. And those are arguably the four best brawlers in the game. So those are the ones that only got nerfed. Some of them got nerfs and buffs from star powers in the original brawlers. Um, but anyways, all the nerfs I'm really, really happy about. It really does fit well with the meta and what they're trying to form. We have no clue what the meta is going to be, which is really, really exciting. Uh, we have no clue what it's going to be for the first time in a long time. So I guess we're going to figure that out. Now, moving on to the other brawlers, we have Primo. So his El Fuego damage goes from 1,000 to 1 1.2 thousand, or yeah, 1 1.2 thousand, which is actually really, really huge. Uh, okay, I thought we wasted our super there, and it decreased meteor rush speed from 20 to 25. So this already got decreased once. I guess they think it's still too OP, so they're giving it a little bit of a decrease. It's not that big, but it's unfortunate that they're giving that a nerf, because that did make El Primo really, really fun. Let's see if we can squeeze something. Nope. I guess all we can do is get those full clips. Leon Invisa Heal moved up 25% from 800 to 1 thousand healing per second that is just unreal huge number there 1000 heals per second while in a visit heal you can stay alive a lot longer for you showdown mains like i mean you guys are gonna love that it's absolutely ridiculous it's amazing um they nerfed the other one the smoke bomb the invisibility duration from seven seconds to six seconds i don't know why they did that invisible heal and smoke bomb were kind of neck and neck for which one you pick it's kind of just a preference thing and i don't think they had to so substantially buff one and so substantially nerf the other doesn't really make sense don't know why they did that just gonna do two more before we hop into the next game Bo, his super attacks are now deployed in a fixed pattern so kind of like what they did to tick when they turned it into a fixed pattern um you know they just made it so it's set you can kind of figure out how things are same thing with the piper jump versus just you know having it be rng which nobody likes rng so thank god they did that and then tick decreased uh, automatic reload time effect from 13 to 10 and then increased mine duration from 1.6 to 2. now i don't like that tick was the second best brawler in the game last balance change this balance change i mean he's he's around there he's kind of near the top like six seven area so i don't think he needed a buff don't really see why they did that either way i'm not complaining it is what it is um hopefully it doesn't get too far into the meta but the buffs i really 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 like the buffs so we're going to start off with brock the increased dps from incinerary from 500 to 600 so they went 300 to 400 then they went 400 to 500, now they're going 500 to 600. Now, Incinerary was already really good, actually, when it comes to, like, Siege and um, and Heist for shooting the safe. It was really, really strong. Um, it was really unreal. And they made it even stronger. So it's definitely going to be the preferred star power by a lot of pros now. I don't know if you guys are going to feel the same way. But it's definitely a really, really strong star power now. I missed the ball there. You hate to see it. Gonna get that full clip over there. Anyways, moving on to Crow. Enemies do 20% now less damage instead of 16% from the star power extra toxic. 
You know, that's another good buff. Crow, I feel like, is slowly creeping his way up the meta. I feel like now you can already use him in competitive. Unfortunately, we haven't seen any competitive games where we have had the opportunity to play Crow, but hopefully we will soon. I think Crow's going to be usable. Kind of like a Dark Horse pick, like something you don't expect. You build a comp to kind of face like a Rosa, an 8-bit, a Sandy, maybe even the new Brawler, and then someone sees a Crow and they're just totally countered. I think it can be really good. Anyways, moving on to Daryl. Daryl got a really interesting rework. Because um, I didn't know that they were doing this, but I kind of suspected they were reworking the star power due to the fact that they weren't giving it any buffs and it was literally useless. I'm just going to focus on getting a clip over there. That's good enough. Um, so the Steel Hoops damage reduction it goes from 25 to 30, which is really, really, really good. Everyone's still going to be using that, in my opinion. And then the new Daryl star power is Rolling Reload Rework. Daryl doubles his reload speed for 5 seconds after using it. That could be good, but I mean, you always needed a shield with the Daryl. Everyone says Daryl is the hardest free-to-play brawler to get up just because you don't have the shield. And I mean, if you don't have the shield, it's useless. So obviously you have to use the shield star power. That is going to be Daryl. Moving on to Nita. And this is my favorite one. I, I'm a bad Nita player. I mean, I'm not terrible, but I'm definitely not a competitive Nita player. Um, I cannot play Nita competitively. There's just a bunch of other better Nita players. But she got a buff, so her health, I believe, yep, went from 3.8,000 to 4,000, so 5.3 upgrade. And the increased main attack damage from 740 to 800, which is plus 8.1%. Now, she never really got a nerf. Just other brawlers kept coming out, and then other ones got buffed, and so on and so forth. And she just never got a buff. She kind of just stood there while everyone else was getting stronger. So that is the reason why she went out of meta. Really happy that hopefully she's going to get back in it, because again, I just love playing Nita. It's a it's a fun brawler where you can like, oh, that's, my auto aim button did not work there. Where you can outplay people, you can do really fun things. Oh, let's see if we can get this goal. Oh, we just got that buzzer beater, so I'm so happy Nita's back in the meta. Gene increased magic puff healing from 300 to 400, plus 33%. Still think nobody's going to use it. At least it's a little better for you free-to-play users who only have one star power, and unfortunately you got that one. I'm sorry. Poco increased Da Capo from 600 to 800 heals. I, that's really good. I think Poco might move a little bit more into meta, but not necessarily as a mid like she used to be, but kind of just like as a lane in Brawl Ball or something like that. Spike increased fertilizer healing from 600 to 800. Now that's a really, really good star power now. Um, that's definitely going to be the best star power in my opinion, or one of the best star powers at lower trophies. You guys say curveball isn't broken. At competitive and at top trophies, it's 100% broken, but maybe if people don't know how to use it, I can understand how it wouldn't be broken. This star power is going to be broken everywhere. I would 100% recommend people use it. That's going to be really good. And Penny's increased main attack damage from 840 to 900. Um, Penny's often used in Siege. And a little bit in Heist. Maybe we're going to see her more on Gem Grab where she used to just dominate. We'll see. But anyways, that is going to be it for the update video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I can't get it out as fast as the other guys. And I do apologize for that. But there's just no way I can. I try and give my best insight on it, which they don't have. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is going to be it for today. I'm working on the new series. Uh, not series is. I, I remember. I learned. Not series is, but the new series. I'm super, super excited to have everything done. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. That's going to be it for me today. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.